Hey guys, this is Sapan Sharma here and I'm back with another tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about how we can implement or how we can integrate eSeva payment gateway into our Laravel application. So in this tutorial we'll be looking at how we can integrate the payment gateway. So this payment gateway is specifically uh, used in Nepal. So the so this video is speci specifically de dedicated to all the Nepali all the Nepali developers residing in Nepal and working with and who want to work with eSeva e payment gateway. So before we get started, just a quick reminder that if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to stay updated about the future releases. And I'll be posting more uh, Laravel related tutorials in the future as well. So coming back to the tutorial. So what I've done is I have opened up the command prompt on my scdocs folder and what i'll do is i'll just create a new laravel project so let's start by typing our composer command so composer create project and the prefer distribution will be laravel laravel and let's name it eseva integration and the version of laravel that i'll be using is version 7 but the method that we'll be using in this tutorial will be applicable on all versions of laravel so it doesn't really matter what type of what version that we use to integrate our payment gateway but in this tutorial i'll be using 7 because laravel 8 is relatively new and working with the file structure might be might could be a little bit difficult so so using version 7 mil will make it much simpler and easy to use so let's hit enter and i'll come back as the as soon as the application finishes installing so our laravel 7 application has been successfully installed and our next step is i'll just open this in our visual studio code editor so i'll just cd into eseva eseva integration folder and then i'll open that in our code editor so if you look at the eseva documentation uh, what it does mention here is we need to in order to integrate eseva into our application we basically need to perform two steps the first step is the payment step where we'll be using a simple form to send some parameters using this form uh, we, and we'll be sending the data to this link so this route with the method of post and we'll, we also need to specify some input parameters uh, and we'll be discussing about this in just a moment we can use the this uh, request uh, in, in multiple languages so we can send a simple html form or we can also use javascript and python and php so in the first part we'll be using the form to send the request to the eseva server and in the next in the second step uh, so the second step is we need to we need to verify the payment so we to make sure that our all the credentials that we are sending to the server and the and the credentials that we receive from the eseva server are valid so in this step we need to we will be verifying the transaction and then after if the transaction is valid then eseva will then it will deduct the then it will deduct the amount from the customer's account and finally our transaction will get successful so in this step also we can use the form and everything uh, and all the other uh, languages like javascript and php but we'll be implementing this code in our controller so we'll be using this php code to send the request again and then we'll receive the response and depending on the response we get we'll be executing different types of code so if the response is successful so if we get a success response then we'll be we'll can move uh, further to create the database and everything all the operations 
that we need to do after the transaction is successful and if the transaction is failed then we'll just abort the transaction so our first step is we need to include this form so we'll be using this html form so what i'll do is i'll just copy this form from the top to the from the beginning to the ending form tag and i'll open the visual studio code and in our resources views welcome.blade.php so this is the page that we will see while our application loads the the home page so as a home page will be will be shown with this page this welcome.blade.php file so what i'll do is i'll just customize a little bit of it uh, so i can what i can do is i'll just remove all these links and maybe i'll also remove this and what i'll do here is i'll just i'll create a okay i can i can just copy and paste that here so this is the html form that we need and what it basically consists of is the it consists of an action route so this is the uh, after we click on the submit button uh, we will be redirected to the eseva page and this it will send a post request to this method so we will be redirected to the eseva page and we also need to specify some values so we have a value of t amount so let's go and check our documentation first to see what are the values that we need to send so the amount is the amount of product or item so if uh, if uh, we are implementing a certain cart uh, in an e-commerce application for example so this is the amount of the this is the total amount of all the items that we uh, of all the items or the products that we have in our cart and the tx amount is the tax amount we want to use so so we can use also apply some tax for all the products and we can and the psc is the service charge so if you so if you want to implement the service charge then we can specify in this parameter and the pdc is the delivery charge so if we are sending if we are delivering the, the item to a certain location then we can uh, charge some money uh, for example 50 rupees and the t amount is the total amount which is the sum of all these four parameters so as you can see here after uh, after summing all these values we get the t amount parameter so when we sum all these then we should get the total uh, we should get the value as total amount and we need to also need to specify that in our form and the pid is the unique id or the order id so we'll we can generate a unique order id for each order and then uh, we can pass that as a parameter in our form and the scd is the merchant code so if so once you create a merchant account then they'll provide uh, us with a specific merchant code so we need to specify the merchant code in this parameter and the su and fu parameters generally def uh, deta define the uh, status of our request so if we get a value of su that means our request was successful and our transaction was successful it means our transaction was successful and if you get a value of fu that means our transaction failed and depending on these values we'll be implementing different types of actions so what i'll do is i'll just go to the visual studio code and i'll just keep these amounts as it is because we are testing here but in cases uh, in real world cases what we want to do is, what we can do is we can actually query the values from the database and then store these and then pass these values and as you know that in laravel what we can do is we can pass the values like the using the blade directives so we can specify the values that we are that we get from the controller and then we can pass it to the blade file and then we can use those values here so in this tutorial i'll be using the demo amount and in the end i'll also be showing a real world uh, real world example that i've implemented so that you'll get an idea of how we can actually perform an eceva transaction so from the start to the end like creating the order getting the cards getting the total amount from the database and everything i'll show it in the end so just a quick demo of how we can implement that and it also has a value of epay payment uh, which is the 
SCD. So this is the merchant code. So this is the test merchant code that we can use. And in real in real world uh, example, we need to specify our own merchant code. And this is the product ID. So I'll just keep it as it is for now. And we also need to specify the name parameter. So don't forget to include this. So it will, uh, depending on these name parameters, uh, Iseva will identify all the different types of inputs that we are sending. And what we have here is, so we also need to send uh, two redirect URLs. So what happens uh, after the, after we successfully send a request to Iseva, and when the user logs in to the Iseva account and when they successfully pay their account then will be redirected to our own application that is our own website so we need to specify uh, to which route we wanna redirect to so what i'll do here is i'll just mention i'll just uh, define a route so http and what i've done is i have created a url for our project so we i want to redirect them to http test and payment verify and it will also send a query of su if the transaction was successful and i wanna i can just copy this and paste that here so if we get a value of su that means our transaction was successful and depending on that value we can perform further actions and if our if we get a value of fu in our q parameter then our transaction field and depending on that will issue will perform some other actions so we need to define this payment verifier route and what i'll do is i'll just save this and in our routes web.php file i'll just define a new route so let me just paste that and i'll just copy this and paste that here so this is the home route for our project and i'll just copy this part and paste that here so after we go to the payment verifier so we'll be redirect to the uh, redirect to redirected to this route and what i want to do here is i want to execute a function so i can define a array which will use a controller of payment verification controller at the rate verify so we haven't defined this controller yet and i'll just define it now and i can also name that as payment dot verify so now we what we'll do is if we are successful uh, if we uh, when we are redirected to uh, when we are redirected to our own website so that is what we have defined here so http test payment verify so we will hit this route here so we'll hit this route and then after we hit this route we want to go to payment verification controller at the rate verify method so i'll just quickly create a controller and let me just remove this so php artisan make controller payment verification controller and let's just leave it like that okay i made a mistake here it should be make and our controller has been created so let's go to app HTTP controllers and payment verification controller and let's define a function as verify and since this is a get request so we'll also get a request object here so we can access all the values from our request in our controller so what I'm gonna do is I want to store a value I want to create a variable as status and I want to get the value of our request queue variable so what happens is we'll be receiving a value as q 
equal to so this is the parameter name and this is the actual value so we'll use this parameter and then we can get access to this actual value so <coughs> if the transaction was successful then we'll get a value of su and if the transaction failed then we'll get a value of fu so let me just save our web.php file and let's go to our payment verification controller and let's die dump our status value so that you'll get an idea of what this request query actually does so we'll be getting the value in our status so let's go to our browser and go to isewa.test so this is the default laravel project and this consists of a simple form so this submit button is actually the form that we'll be sending so whenever we click on the submit button then we will be redirected to the isewa page and then the customer will enter their username and password and then they'll pay the specified amount so our specified amount here is 100 so they need to pay the 100 amount and then we'll be redirected back to this route so this is the route that we are specifying in our own in our own project you know in our own laravel application and we'll also get a value of value as uh, query as q you know we'll be getting a variable as q and depending on these values we'll be performing further actions so let's go and click on submit button here and we should uh, we should be redirected to the eseva page as expected so i'll click on submit and now we are redirected to the this route so as mentioned in our form actions uh, form actions method form actions value so i'll just remove this and the test username uh, the test eseva id and password r so the eseva id is the number that you see here so this is the number and the password is capital n e p a l at the rate one two three so i'll just unhide that and this is the test email <coughs> so this is the test eseva id and password to to perform testing for our eseva transaction so i'll just click on login and this is successful login okay multiple add-ons for the same transaction so if this happens then what we need to do is we need to change the product id so it uses the product id value to specify to determine the type of transactions so determine the different type of transactions so unique so this should be unique so now this should work again fine so let's go and reload our page and click on submit and again click on login okay i think this i need to change that to capital nepal at the rate one two three and click on login again okay now we are successful login and as you can see here all the specified values in our form are shown here so the total amount was 30 the delivery charge the service charge and all product amount everything is shown here as we mentioned in our form and we are not logged in i don't really know what's the problem here so click on login so i'll just create a new product id and keep it as one two three four five six seven eight nine and one four seven save that and again open up our project and click on submit button so we are redirected here and click on login and this is not working so for some reason the internet okay, microsoft edge browser was not working i just open up a new chrome browser and again click on submit and now we are directed to the eseva page and click on login again and as you can see we have we are successfully logged in and after we hit the continue payment then we'll be redirected to the route 
that we have defined here so this route so we'll be redirected to this route and what happens when we hit this route so we need to check our web.php file and we'll whenever we hit this route we will go to the payment verification controller at the rate verify method which is here so we have defined and we'll get also we'll also get a request object so we can access all the values that we get in our request so using the request queue we can access the values and what i'm doing here is i'm tie dumping the status so what actually should happen is we should either get a value of su or fu because we are die it so if our transaction was successful we'll see su and if our transaction failed then we we should see fu so in this case our transactions should be successful and we should see a value of su so i'll just click on continue payment and confirm and expect and ex, as expected we uh, we can see a value of su that means till now our transaction is successful and everything is working fine and as we check the documentation here it has also mentioned so our first part has been completed successfully and our second part so we so whenever we whenever the ECVR redirects us to the to our URL so whenever we are redirected back to our own URL we get some values so the first one is the OID which is the product ID that we sent from our form the second one is the amount which is the total amount that we also sent from the form and the third one is the reference ID so reference ID is a unique ID that ECVR generates for each transaction so to identify different transaction it uses a reference ID value to differentiate between the transactions so what we can do is we can get all these values from our request parameter so what I'll do is I'll just go to our controller and I'll just get all the values from our request object so I'll get the OID and I can name that as OID request OID and also get the ref ID which is request ref ID and also the amount which is request amount so in order to check whether all these values are valid or not what we can do is we can tie dump it so amount oid and ref id so i'll just dump all the three values here so first one is oid it's not a uid it's oid second one is ref id and the third one is amount so let's go to our browser and again refresh so this the these are all the values that we are actually extracting from our request object and dumping it here so reload the page and you can see all these values so everything is working fine till now and let's go and check what's the next step so our next step is to verify our payment so this step is basically done to prevent the fraud to to manage from the fraud so to prevent from all the fraud so if uh, someone can actually inject so someone can actually perform an attack like sql injection or they can also manipulate our html files or they can actually what they can actually do is they can change these values so from here they can actually change the reference id and the amount from here and when they reload the page then we'll be getting all these values and depending on that we can't actually perform the transactions so the value that we receive from here and the value that we send should be same so if someone from here okay i'll just show you how we can actually manipulate this so what i can do here is i can actually change the amount to 10 and now if i die dumped then you can see that we are getting an amount of 10 so which is actually which is which looks uh, which looks like a legit isewa redirect url but 
the actual value is actually manipulated here so in order to prevent that so we what we need to do is we need to check whether our value that we sent and the value that we receive from the ECOA server match so in order to check that whether the value that we sent from our server and the value that we receive from the ECOA server uh, are actually equal we need to perform this step that is the payment verification step and in this step what we need to do is we need to send a request to ECOA server again so we need to specify all these values so amount reference ID process ID and SCD and we need to make a request so what it is basically doing here is in PHP code it is also making a request to ECOA server again so using the uh, post method so in here you can see we can actually implement that using the form as well but in this case we'll be using PHP because now we are in our controller so we are in this place now so our we can execute some code here so what I'll do is I'll just uh, paste that code here and just align that properly so there are some missing values here and what we can do here is so it will make a post request to this route so this route is actually different from the one that we use in the previous route and the amount that we use so in this case we need to make a we can actually we need to actually send the value from our database and not the value that we receive here so these are the values that we are receiving from our request object so we shouldn't use these values but we should use the values that we can that we get from our database and the rid is the reference id so we need to send this reference id so this value this unique uh, reference id is generated by ECOA and we need to send that again so i'll just paste that here and remove this and the pid is the one that we sent from our form method so i'll just copy this and paste that here so we shouldn't use this PID actually and the SCD is EPA payment so everything should work fine and this PHP code is actually making a post request to the ECOA server and after the code executes then we'll get a response so after we get a response what I can do here is I can actually diadem that response to see what we are getting here so i'll just check the documentation once again so as it is mentioned here that after the transaction gets uh, is successful then we'll get a response of this type so we'll have a value of success in our response message and if the transaction fails then we'll get a value of failure so we can actually check that value so if we have a value of success then we can actually perform further actions like making an order uh, making an order for that specific user so the authenticated user we can actually make a new order for that and if the value is failure then we can abort the transaction and uh, mention and notify the user that the transaction failed and some error occurred so let me just okay i just died on that response so what i can do is i can go to the browser and reload our page all the values that we send at the beginning of our transaction actually matches with the values that we have sent again so in this case we are sending all these values so these values actually match and because of that we are getting a response of success so in some case if our okay let me just do one thing what I can do is I can alter these values so I'll just change the value of PID as I'll just remove one value and again go to the browser and reload so in this case we should get a value of failure and now as you can see here we are getting a value of failure because our PID that is our product ID didn't match with the previous one so again in this case I'll just show one more scenario so I'll just keep the PID as same and what I can do is I can alter the amount so 
I can alter the amount and keep it as 10 and again go to the browser and reload the page and we should also get a failure message so we are getting a value of failure so I'll just undo that and what could be our next step so we are getting a response of success if the transaction completes successfully and we can use a PHP helper function to determine whether our response has a value of success or failure so the helper function that we can use here is called str pose so what it does is it will help us to check whether a certain string consists of a certain value so if our response has consists of a string of success and if that is true that means our response variable consists of a value of uh, of a string called success and which means our transaction was successful and in this case uh, we can actually perform further actions like in uh, like we can actually create a new order for that specific user using all the cart items and perform further actions in here so that is making the transaction complete is the part that we can implement here and else what we can do is we can actually so let me just comment it here so transaction was successful and what i can also do is i can actually item this value else our transaction failed so once again final time what i'll do is i'll just go and reload my browser so if our response consists of a value of success that means our transaction was successful and if the response consists of a value of failure so this value so we are checking whether the response value consists of a string success using the str pose function so if it if the response variable consists of a value of success that means our transaction was successful otherwise our transaction failed so i'll just go to the browser and reload it once again and as you can see our transaction was successful so this is how we can actually implement ECWA payment gateway into our Laravel application and also a real case scenario which I developed so we so that you can get a better idea of how we are we can actually implement this and it will also make you understand uh, it will also help you understand it properly so let's go and check that project So I want to show you a real world project which I programmed myself, which I made in myself. So what I've done here, so in this case, what I've done is I have created a cart controller and the index method returns a blade of cart. So we are returning a cart view file here. So frontend.cart. So this is the cart. And what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the session ID. So the current session of the user. So this session ID will be used to will be used in place of our process ID and I'm also defining a site URL here. So while testing we can use the local host local domain and whenever we wanna uh, when whenever we make our project live then we can change that and it will reflect in all other places. So this is the actual domain. And what I'm doing here is I'm just defining a success URL where I'm concatenating my route with the actual URL here. And the merchant code is EP payment. So this is the test merchant code. And the URL for that is the action that will it will go to is this route. And what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the card count. So counting all the items for this specific card. So using this session ID, we are counting the card and defining a value of total as zero and then also getting all the card items where the session id matches with this session id and then what i'm doing here is i'm just looping through each card item to get the total value so the total amount 
so we could use this uh, we can also use it in an alternative way but i'm doing what i'm but i'm actually looping through each of the card items so we'll get the total so this is the total amount and if the user is authenticated that means uh, we also want to get all the orders so orders where the user id is authenticated user id and what i'm doing here is i'm just returning the view of frontend.card and also sending all these values and what happens uh, after that so we are redirected back to our server so after we successfully send the request to the eSeva e server then we'll be redirected to this route so my orders payment verify and we'll also get this values so this route will uh, whenever we, we whenever we hit this route then we'll go then we'll go to this payment verify method and we also get the request param request object here so again i'm checking the total to uh, and i'm and i'm making the total to zero and total quantity to quantity to zero defining the merchant code and defining the verification url and also getting the session id and also getting all the card items and the count of all the card items and getting all the total quantities so now the actual part starts here so if the request query has a value of success that means our transaction was successful and we all we need to further process our transaction so we are getting all the values from the request parameters so oid amount and reference id so we only need this reference id to we'll be storing this value in our database and we actually don't need these two so what i'm doing here is i'm defining a data array and the amount is the total that we are actually getting it from the database so this is the database value and not this amount which we get from the parameter which we get from the request the get parameter so we are actually looping through the database and again again getting all the total from the database and the total quantity and the reference id is the one that we get from our parameter so request object the session id is the uh, actual session id of the user and the merchant code is that we define here so ep payment and now we are executing the php script to send the request to the eceva server and then we get a response and now we are checking here so if the response consists of a value of success so str post function so if it consists of success and if it is not equal equal to false that means it generally denotes that it is true so we did here is equal equal to true and is not equal to false so both derive the same value and then what we can do is we are creating a new order so i have created a model for our order so the order table. then what we are doing here is we are storing the session id we are storing the user id we are storing the number of products we are stored storing the total quantity and the subtotal amount the total amount and the payment option so payment option as eseva and the reference id as the reference id that we are getting from the parameters and after that okay i'm also doing here is i'm for each card item i am marking them as checked out equal to yes so they are checked out and I'm saving them and also what I'm doing here is I am regenerating the session so the next time the user makes a new request then they don't get an error of multiple uh, that, that means uh, to generate a new process ID we are uh, regenerating the session and then we are redirecting them to the my orders page with the success of your order has been placed successfully so else so this is the part so if the response doesn't consist of a success value that means our transaction fails so in that case we are also gener regenerating the session and then we are redirecting to the my order space and then specifying that your order has failed and this else part is the so if we get a request query of if we don't get a request query of success so that means our value consists of fu that means our transaction failed in the first part so in that case as well our transaction our order fails and then we specify to the user that 
an error occurred and the order has failed so this is the real life scenario of how i am implementing i am i am actually implementing the ecfr payment gateway in my uh, in a real world project and i hope that you understand you i hope that it helped you understand how we can actually implement this so you can use these uh, ideas to implement it in your in your own project and i hope this was helpful as a conclusion what i want to say is uh, that if you find this very really helpful then do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon and i'll be making some more tutorials so this is the tutorial on integrating iseva so i'll be also making a tutorial on integrating khalti into our laravel applications so subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that and until next time keep learning have a great day and see you in the next one